The other day, Janet and I took a trip down to New Mexico to buy a ristra. A ristra is simply a bunch of chilies that have been hung in a bundle to dry so they can be used later. These days, they're mostly used as a decorative item and people dry chili some other way. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So today, I need to make some hooks to hang the ristra, or should I say ristras, because we ended up with two of them, from the ceiling in the house. What I envision for these hooks is something starting off kind of like a great big nail, where the spike of the nail is going to become the hook and the head is going to be spread out pretty wide. I think I want a, maybe a two inch diameter round head and that's going to get a couple of screws in it and that's going to be a mounting flange. Maybe a little chisel work on the flange to make the whole thing a little bit ornamental and give it a little bit of a New Mexican flair to go along with the reestras. So the first step, I need to make a heading tool to do a nail that big and I'm going to do something that I should be able to use at the anvil, power hammer, press, however it is, I want to spread the head of that out. And we may look at some different techniques there to do that. So for that, I've got this piece of round bar that's left over from when we made the rounding hammer. This is two inches in diameter and just a little bit over two inches long. It's just what I happen to have. So that's about 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. I'm gonna want a square hole in this, but I don't really wanna spend the time punching this so I'm gonna go ahead and drill this, think I'll do that at the lathe, and then I'll square the whole thing up and my round hole will then square up right along with the block. Now, frankly, I'm not much of a machinist, so this old lathe doesn't get used very much in the shop. And this is a good excuse to make some sort of use of it. That gives me the square hole I want down the middle of this. I'm gonna let it air cool and then I'll weld a handle on it. That's just a quick look at how I made the heading tool. There are lots of other ways you can make a tool to use for this purpose. This is so I can have enough space through here that the hook portion can be contained in the tool because there's no hardy hole on the anvil. If you're working over a hardy hole, you can just use a tool like this, put it over the hardy hole, and you can have as long a protrusion through there as you need to have. So this is kind of a special purpose tool. We're gonna to see how it works. For the hooks, I have some cutoffs of one inch round bar. I'm gonna draw out a section that will fit inside the tool. That's what will eventually become the hook. And then I'll cut it off and that part will become the flange that it hangs from. And yes, I'm gonna do this under the power hammer. No, you don't have to.
Make sure you keep an eye on the link. You don't want to drive this all the way through the tool into the bottom die of the power hammer. If you do that, it will upset in the tool, and you might not get it back out. This same tool can then be used under the hydraulic press or even at the anvil if you need to. Now what do you do if you want a hook end, or the spike part of this, that is longer than what you made the heading tool? Well, if you're working under the power hammer or the hydraulic press, you can just add a bolster and that will be plenty long enough for this to work. And of course, if you're working by hand at the anvil, you can just put that over the Pritchell hole or the Hardy hole. Whichever place you want to work. In that case, you can also just use a regular old heading tool and not worry about making a special tool. So if you don't have a power hammer, or if you're just making a couple of these, I would do it this way. I just felt like trying it under the power hammer. That head ended up really off center, so I'm gonna to have to trim that before I do any more with it. I wanna do a little bit of decorative chisel work on these, and I'm gonna do that before I draw out the hook part so I can keep that stem as short as possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and start this cold under the treadle hammer. We may not have to get it hot for this. But if we do, having the chisel lines established cold will make life a lot easier. Make sure you've got a stop in place so you can't smash your hand if the chisel kicks out. While we're here, let's go ahead and center punch a couple of holes. I'd like to take a moment and thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to choose from. If you're like most blacksmiths, your creative interests don't begin and end with blacksmithing. There are lots of classes on Skillshare that might help you with your creative journey. Classes in drawing, graphic design, photography, video production. I take a lot of classes on video production with Skillshare and I believe that they have really helped up the quality of the videos that I present for you here at Black Bear Forge and a lot of you have actually commented on the improved quality. So I appreciate you noticing and I appreciate Skillshare for making that information available for me. As it gets colder and winter comes on I spend a little bit less time outside, more time inside which is a great opportunity to take some online classes. Right now, the first thousand people that use the link in the video description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Let's get back to the video. Next step, let's draw out the part that's gonna be a hook. This is a little bit tricky and it does make it fiddly to have this head complete, but I think it's way easier to do the head or the flange or the mounting piece, whatever you wanna call it, before we draw out the hook. So we just have to be careful not to mess it up at this point. I find a pair of V-bit tongs with a cross notch right at the very edge. Works pretty good for this. And I can still get this in under the power hammer or close to the edge of the anvil if I'm working by hand.
This turns out to be an interesting project. I made eight different hooks, all with a little bit different variation, round, square. One of them I even started with a rectangular bar and they're all good usable hooks. Now, is this the most efficient way to make a hook of this style? Well, I'm thinking probably not. It seemed like a good idea, but they were a little fiddly to hold on to and hard to get into the transition between the flange of the hook part as you were drawing the hook out. So I think in the long run, if I were gonna do these as a production item, I would do them as a two-piece hook with a separate flange and the hook would then either be tinned in or plug welded in for a more modern approach. But nevertheless, it was a fun project. It was certainly worth trying and it gives me a chance to just explore some creative possibilities. And that's really the way you learn what works and what doesn't work. This is certainly a viable approach to this. I just don't think it's the most efficient approach. We're gonna hang Janet's reasters up with a couple of these. The rest I'm just gonna keep around and sooner or later, we'll find something else that needs to be hung from the ceiling. Hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.